Richard Knox is a native son of Brooklyn, New York, where he attended Brooklyn College and later earned a master's degree in educational administration from Baruch College. After moving to Merrick, he began a long tenure as director of mathematics from the Copia, I always say Copeg. Copeg yeah. Public Schools. Following his retirement, he began to develop a series of multimedia presentations on his first love, the performing arts. His list of current programs includes Broadway musicals, film, opera, um, 20th century songwriters and vocalists. And I'm delighted to tell you that he's going to continue bringing us such wonderful programs in the future. Uh, we're very lucky to have found Richard or Richard found us. I'm not sure how it happened, but we are delighted that Richard can come to us virtually from New York to Boca Raton. Since embarking on his second career, Richard has presented at over 100 venues in Long Island, Queens, and Westchester, and now he can add Florida to that list. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Stephanie. I appreciate uh, the introduction. Uh, so we're ready to go? Yes, we're ready to go. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go to my screen share and then just a couple of introductory notes. Uh, I usually don't like reading anything during the program. Uh, but I made one exception with um, the very beginning. So you're not going to see a whole lot on the screen share until the first note is finished, um, except a little uh, orange cone for my uh, VLC media player. Okay, so why don't we get started? Here we are in, in 2020, stuck in isolation at home, trying to manage our lives while the entire world attempts to deal with a pandemic the likes of which none of us has ever lived through. So perhaps it might be wise for us to take a trip back in time to another day 75 years ago when our country was also in crisis. It was April 19th, 1945. World War II was still raging on. Adding to the country's misery was the passing of President Roosevelt only a week earlier. Just as we are currently looking for ways of diverting our attention from all that surrounds us, theater audiences were still flocking to the St. James Theater in Manhattan to watch the most successful musical up to that time, Oklahoma, which had just begun its third year on Broadway. And yet on that day in April, the creative team most responsible for that wonderful production, composer Richard Rogers and lyricist Oscar Hammerstein, were extremely anxious. Rehearsals for their next musical were not going well. They both were full of doubt as to whether the show opening that evening at the Majestic Theater could come anywhere close to the success of Oklahoma. Just a few days earlier, Rogers had severely injured his back and had to watch opening night on a stretcher propped against the box behind the curtain. And yet reflecting back, they had little to be concerned about. The debut of Carousel was a resounding, a resounding success with theater goers and critics alike. The risky decision they made by transforming a dark, depressing story set in Hungary entitled Lilium into a musical relocated to coastal New England had paid off big time. But the risk didn't stop there. They hired two relative newcomers, John Raitt and Jan Clayton, to play the central roles of Billy Bigelow and Julie Jordan. They took the unprecedented step of dropping the traditional overture, whose main function was to allow late arrivals to take their seats prior to the curtain going up. What took its place you were about to see in this first clip. And let's get the program rolling. <laughs> I think it has a great message, and it's an optimistic one and a romantic one. And both of these qualities happen to be very important in my philosophy. Okay, so you heard playing in the background there the opening strains of the wonderful carousel waltz that substituted for the overture, as, as the quip was alluding to. Uh, the orchestration uh, behind that, you know, Rogers didn't do that alone. He had a wonderful uh, arranger named Richard Russell Bennett, who uh, worked with him not only on that, but on Oklahoma, and then later worked with Lerner and Lowe on some of their shows, including 
Brigadoon, and the arranger is the one who really gets to decide which instruments are playing which pieces of music during uh, a particular uh, melody. Uh, the uh, piece that you're going to see next, this next clip, to really get a full appreciation of just how great a piece of, of instrumental music the Carousel Waltz is, you're going to see a full-length version of it uh, performed by John Wilson in the BBC Orchestra. This was uh, taped at the Promenade Concerts in 2010. And keep, um, uh, keep your eyes open for just how many different instruments Rogers and Bennett make use of during this. You're going to see trombones and timpani and tubas and uh, even a triangle pops up at one, at one point. It's just an amazing piece of, um, of music when it's played with a full symphony orchestra such as you're going to see here. So uh, let's check out our next clip. 